as I've got older, I have to say, I, I, I find, um, I don't know, whether it's uh, this or politics or anything, I think um, fundamentalism uh, can and must die. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, it's, you, you need to be able to, um, yeah, have a sense of humour about things because, you know, uh, the, the purest thing is uh, about the most tedious thing I can think of, you know. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Martin, you're obviously not on any social media particularly, are you? So you kind of miss out on a lot of that. You're not really either, no, are you? not really. Yeah, I, I, I try, try to miss it, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Martin's, Martin's on hundreds of social media accounts. <laughs> Trouble is none of them are Martin. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, I have some worry. imposters, but um, sorry. I think yeah, I think keeping yourself out of that it, for me it is slightly uh, is slightly good for my mm. brain. G- g- genuinely, you know, I think it's uh, it's quite good to be slightly a part of it. Otherwise, you can. I think it can send you mad quite easily, you know. Absolutely. Here, here. Well, I suppose my my memories go back, I guess, to um, eighty nine, ninety, ninety one, when at the same kind of time as talking loud. Um, that both those labels were covering, you know, two slightly different parts of one scene, I suppose. And uh, for me, it just made complete sense, you know, like as a sort of 18, 19, 20 year old, um, it was very exciting. It was really, really exciting because it covered a lot of the bases that I loved. It covered soul, hip hop, funk, jazz, jazz, obviously. Um, And it was, it felt fresh, you know, it felt really, really new. Um, and it felt, and for a, for a minute there, it felt like the the most exciting thing on the block, and uh, and it happened to sort of coincide with a lot of my taste, and it and yeah, I and mean, just the look of it was great, the design was great, bands like you know JTQ and the brand new heavies and all that, but just you know people I really loved, and I would go and see them, and it's that time, especially that time in your life when you're sort of spotting your tribe. And uh, and I love the fact again as a sort of as a sort of lifelong mod, I was seeing my tribe slightly mutate and do kind of exciting different things, which um, which is part of the reason I get very frustrated with that tribe because very often it doesn't do very exciting new things. Well, I can't, I can't think of anything nicer, can you, Ed? Like you know, to, to listen, we've all got you know whether the compilations that that I was listening to as a teenager someone's got to bring you this information, right? And, uh, you know, we don't come out of the womb knowing all the music and all the books and all the films in the world. So, you know, someone's got to bring it to you. So the idea that, you know, our albums are another little, you know, part of that process for people, uh, that, that for me is the absolute reason for doing it, yeah. The fact that we can pass on some of this received wisdom to the next generation of kids, you know, there hasn't <clears> been <throat> a jazz series like this since... You know the the glory days of 1990, pretty much. So the fact that people are taking it seriously from our compilations is immensely uh, wonderful to us. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I suppose I find myself uh, when I'm compiling the tunes for the, the records that I kind of think I don't want just want to sound like a clever you know jazz head, right? Because I I do want fifteen year olds to listen to this and go, oh, I like jazz. Mm. But at the same time, you don't want to you know you we're trying not to put things uh, on these albums that have been compiled to death. Do you know what I mean? Because there are loads of jazz standards, loads of you know jazz dance standards, club jazz stuff that we we are not putting on there because someone's already done it fifteen times. You know, um, mm. so we don't want to be too obvious. But at the same time, I personally don't want to be too obscure for its own sake. You know, like I, I've never really found the, the value in that either. You know, I want, to hear, I want to hear things and share things that people will actually like as music and not just as a badge to wear, you know. I love being turned on to not just jazz, but other music that I think this isn't necessarily meant for me, as in it's a younger audience and you're certainly a younger person doing it. But I love having my ears opened to that stuff. I think with jazz... I, uh, with a lot of jazz anyway, I suppose a lot of the jazz that I listen to more is melody, I suppose, you know, because you, you sort of realise that there was a period um, where melody was absolutely at the forefront of popular music, you know. And again, I'm not saying there's no good melodies, I'm not saying that anymore, but but there was a period where it was absolutely king, you know, like if, if it was a tune, it was a real, real tune. And I suppose a lot of the stuff that me and Eddie play and, and are on these compilations is a perfect mixture of melody. And if there's a lyric, then a good lyric, but also that percussive uh, arrangement to a lot of it that um, I find it hard to better that, 